Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today I'm very pleased to show you some of the fundamentals used in Cali Arts Education and a couple of ways I'm conducting labs. So the very first step whenever we have students working in a Cali lab is to get organized, which is known as Missam Plus. Part of the Missam Plus, as you can see with your associated handout, is the station layout, which you have here in front of you. The station layout consists of a waste bowl. And the waste bowl, the reason for this is um, research shown that using a waste bowl and making waste visible to everybody creates a little bit of peer pressure, which then the students are more aware of the waste they're creating. And for you as an instructor, it is a good way to monitor what the students do in class. Um, the other thing we teach is food safety. Food safety and safety in general. Um, that said, we're setting up the cutting board, just like I have it here in front of me, and the trick underneath is a little piece of shelf liner. This shelf liner is available in stores, which you can cut to size, and I want to show you the difference. If you have a cutting board on a table on a slippery surface like this, this cutting board is very unstable. So when students work with a knife, potentially the board can slip and students get hurt. To secure the cutting board, you simply put the shelf liner underneath, cutting board on top, and as you can see, this becomes a very stable surface like this. So safety of the students is one of our highest priorities. Additionally, we have line out on a side tile, which I not only carry, but also on my workstation, I have laid out several tools. First one is a tasting spoon. Um, Every time the students make a food item, they have to taste it. It's one of the most important things in culinary arts to ensure that the food they serve is appropriately um, seasoned with salt and pepper or in some other incidents, um, sweet enough, sour enough, whatever the case may be. A whisk, one of the basic tools to incorporate different ingredients. A chef knife, and this chef knife um, I choose because we present all of these tools not only on the table for each workstation, but also in a toolbox, which is a simple box bought at one of the home stores, um, home improvement stores, which has a cover on it. It not only protects the blade, but also um, it protects the students again from getting hurt when they grab into the box and exposed to, to blades like this. A sharpening steel, a little paring knife, which is used for different applications, and a heat resistant silicon rubber spatula. Now, some of the new items as this one, the heat resistant rubber spatula, if you imagine this spatula has been used thousands of times, it still looks brand new. It didn't melt away like in the olden days um, because you can actually keep this spatula inside the cooking medium and it doesn't get ruined as fast as the other ones which were melting away and not flexible. It's got some flexible edges, so when you apply it to a round bowl as such, um, it scrapes out all the corners. So this is the basic setup. We have also a container with water, um, which is sort of replacing the spoon rest. And the spoon rest would be, you're using a tool, you're mixing up something, you would put that then in our um, water and the water is enhanced with 10% or 100 parts per million of bleach. So we take little, one little cap, not cup, but cap full of bleach, add it to the water, which then sanitizes the tools and the tools are ready to use right away again. So I'm not going to have this randomly on my station. Um, it's also encouraged to clean as you go. So I have a little side towel, which is damp um, on me and available for cleanup. So this is the basic stage. What it teaches the students? It teaches them the different tools. It teaches them to organize. It teaches them to clean as they go because they have the waste bowl here. So after every task they're doing, they have to reset the station to its original stage. And again, the instructor can see how much waste was created, um, which makes it so much more efficient. And so this is the basic setup, safety in mind, food safety in mind, safety in mind, and everything else. So the next step, once we do this, and we do this with every single lab, it means 
Um, today, this setup, tomorrow, the same setup, every single day. So the student get organized, they feel organized, they got everything available. And then I always tell them not to burn any rubber. That means if they're created all their MISAM Plus, they should be able to stay in front of their workstation without moving around. So once we have the basic setup, we go into basic knife skills. Knife safety is very important to us. So once we remove the cover, we do not allow the student to use the knife without honing or sharpening the knife. For that, we place a wet towel right in front of us. And depending on what kind of steels you use, um, some of them are round, some of them are shaped like these. Um, we place a wet towel underneath. Again, it's for safety reasons, because if you put it right on a straight surface like this, it has a round tip, it may slide away, um, and accidents happen very easily. By putting a wet towel underneath, it keeps the, the steel in place without having the danger of it slipping away. Taking the knife, there's many ways. Several chefs sharpen the knife this way. Several chefs, especially beginners, take the steel in front of them and go in a 45 degree angle from the heel of the knife to the tip of the knife and pass the knife down like so and repeat the same process on this side. Now, each time the students use the knife, they have to do this three times, which means once, two, three times on the right hand side, and one, two, three times on the left hand side. Reason being, if the students does it each and every time they pick up an item to be um, cut or peeled, um, it really will make a difference in their knife skills, in their confident level, and in their safety, because nothing else is worse than a dull knife. Putting the steel aside, a little side tail aside. So the first exercise is to increase student skills. It's something simple like a citrus fruit. In this case, we're using whatever is in season. Um, we teach the students not only to wash their hands for 20 seconds appropriately, but also to wash the fruits. Um, once the fruits are washed, you make sure that all of these little stickers are removed and appropriately go right into the waste bowl. Now, the second safety item is, the safety issue is, when you have a fruit like this and it's not stable on the table, it will roll around, it will maybe roll away from you. So you want to stabilize the fruit. Stabilizing the fruit, taking the chef knife, using the blade, and cutting off one of the end pieces. It goes in the waste bowl. This stabilizes the fruit. The fruit is stable on the table. We explain the different shapes of the fruit. For example, a mango here, which we're going to address later on, has a different shape than an orange. So we wanted the students to follow the natural shape of the fruits. I'm encouraged students to make mistakes. That's why they're here. They're here to learn. But I don't want them to follow through with the mistakes throughout the orange, for example. So if they would take the orange and they make the first cut and they would cut off too little without exposing the fruit, I expect them then to adjust it, which means you have to cut a little bit closer or a little bit more away from the orange. If you cut off too much, you're not only creating a lot of waste, but also destroying the natural shape of the fruit. And the third cut, then what I'm expecting is the students to follow the natural cut and go around the natural shape of the fruit, adjust the pressure on the knife to ensure that eventually the full flesh is exposed. I will put this aside for now and I will start all over again. Um, knives is um, a matter of personal preference. The reason for this is some of the knives are very heavy. It depends on how the knife feels in your hand. Um, it's about the blade. Different knives have different lengths of blades. A 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch, 10 and 12 inch blade. And it depends on the different applications. So the knives I'm using, for example this one, you see it has little indentations here which helps anything stuck to the blade to be released. 
without any, any problems. So you don't have to take the knife and wipe it and it accidentally get cut while you're doing so. Um, so knife, it's a matter of money. Um, some of the knives are real expensive. They go up to three, four, five, six hundred dollars, which is for the super professionals. And then introduction knives, um, something which has no pivots over here, so no bacteria can, can grow on the knife handle. It needs to have a nice grip to it, and the knife like this should balance nicely in your hand, like this. So then you know it's a good knife. And again, it's personal preference. Some people like a lighter handle and a heavier blade. Some people like a heavier handle and a lighter blade. So it then balances differently. So again, let me try to do this now properly. I again cut off as little as possible to stabilize the fruit. Cut around the fruit to expose all the different orange parts. And as you can see, you can never tell how thick the skin of the orange is. So that's why you have to estimate how much skin is there. And you want to totally remove all the skin. And you see how I'm adjusting my cuts here. Okay, I started off not doing so well, adjusted without creating any kind of waste. Now that teaches the students not only simple knife skills, so I don't actually start chopping with the knife because the danger with chopping the knife is that students get hurt. So I want to increase the comfortable level while working with the knife and using a fruit which is available all year round. For example, if there is no oranges available, um, you can also use a lemon or a grapefruit and achieve the same goal. I cut around the fruit to finish it off. And then we're using different terminology. I want this increase the level of students' terminology in the area of culinary arts. And I do this by exposing them to different techniques. So one of the basic techniques would be, as you can see here, beautiful cutaway, would be creating orange supremes. Now, again, I clean my knife. I put it in the holding area here in my container, not only to sanitize it, but also to get it out of the way. And I always teach to clean as we go. Now, I choose a smaller knife to do this task. And I have here a plate to display my finished product. What we're going to do now is we're going to create orange supremes, which is cutting the orange in about a 45 degree angle right over here alongside the membranes of the orange to cut out these segments. And when the segments cut out, they're called supremes, which is then a knife skill students can learn. Again, I cut alongside the membrane, cut it in here, and follow the natural shape of the orange, like so, and then use it to display it on my prepared plate. Now, these plates, again, I have, you will see throughout this recording that I have different kind of plates. And basically what I did is whenever I find plates on sale, really cool plates, different kind of shapes, different kind of, of designs on it, I just buy those. So over the years, I got myself a beautiful collection of different plates, which then makes the fruit display or whatever product I have really appealing. I'm skipping the next one because I don't know if you can see it on the camera, this membrane is very close to the other one, so that would not give me um, any additional supreme cut. I do this. And also, it is sort of what I call a cheap lab, meaning these ingredients are not really expensive. These ingredients are available locally. And these ingredients teaches the students, again, with the setup of the station and um, the availability of the fruits, several skills besides terminology, but also the knife skills. Now, to come back to the knives, one more time, to the choice of my knives, um, I must say I was lucky enough to make connection with a knife company, 
which then I asked to, not to sponsor us, but I really got a good deal on a whole knife set available. So all of these knives are from the same company. So I went to one of our local restaurant suppliers and they supplied me with all the knives. Because we have um, the knives which we have available, they all look alike. And the problem with this is they all get mixed up. So in each little toolbox we have, we have a inventory list and all of the tools here at the end, they're marked. So they got number one for toolbox number one, number two for toolbox number two. So what it does, it keeps your lab organized, which is a really important thing because you know how it is when we have 20 students working in the labs or as many as you have, and then don't know which piece of equipment which looks alike doesn't belong where, it really makes it different, difficult to maintain the labs as it is. And how do you put that mark on there? Um, we bought ourselves a little engraver because it's steel, and we just engraved little numbers, one, two, three, four, five, um, which worked perfectly. Could I interrupt you, excuse yes. me, just for a little housekeeping? Some of you are having problems when you enlarge the screen of the quality of the, the picture not being very good. The only resolution for that is to make the screen smaller. Okay, so what we also do is, when we work with several fruit, we can use this as an opportunity to talk about oxidation. So for example, when we cut uh, fruits for fruit salad, um, I let them cut two oranges, one for the top of a fruit salad as sort of a decoration because we all eat with our eyes, and one for um, the inside of the fruit salad. And if I have two fruit items, for example, the mango which we're gonna cut next, and the orange segments, I then use the remaining membranes, and I'm just gonna do it here for the show, and I teach the students that all of these things are used for leftovers. So I'm using the remaining juice of the membranes, where I squeeze them out like this, and I squeeze this over the fruit salad, in this case would be the bananas, to prevent them from getting brown, and I let them learn a new word, which is oxidation. So I squeeze this over, so then we minimize our waste altogether, and it gives additional yield to the salad, but also additional flavor, and it has a functionality, um, again, to prevent anything from oxi oxidizing. So, <clears throat> as you can see, one um, skill is completed, the supreme of an orange. The students would then display on a plate their work. The instructor could evaluate their work according to their previous instructions. You can clearly see the amount of waste created here. And you can say, well, there was too much waste, too little waste. Um, you can explain things like this when you see fine things like this in the waste bowl. Um, you can make the students aware of um, not as creating as much waste. Or if this is not uh, suitable for the product you're creating, you can still take it and juice it and make them sure that they use 100% of the product available. Because I strongly believe that the food waste we're creating, it's important not only to gain more yield of the product, but also to ensure that the students work that way throughout their life. So if they make aware of little things, attention to detail, you will see they're doing a much better job throughout their career. So I set this aside as the first thing, my Orange Supreme, which then, if time allows, you're in the lab, and actually, believe it or not, by the time you explain the station setup, by the time you explain and demonstrate yourself how to supreme an orange and then have to, the students follow this whole thing, this is easily a 50 minute or an hour and 30 hour, 40 minutes lecture altogether by the time they clean up, okay? So this would be a final product. Let me set this aside and you can see I cleaned as I go along. So everything is ready to go for the next step. So what I like to teach a student is how to organize, how to clean as you go, and then eventually um, be ready for the next step in the process. This is the way it would look like, okay? So the next knife skill I teach is to create a mango hedgehog. And mangoes, and again, I don't necessarily use a mango to do this, but I use mangoes when they're in season. Um, two reasons, one is budgetary, uh, I don't want to buy a mango which is $5 a piece. I'd rather buy them when they're in high season. And seasonal fruits are normally 
cheaper or more available, and they're also riper. So if you find different kind of mangoes and you would look at them, yes, they may have beautiful color, but if you touch them, they're actually really, really hard. So they're not gonna serve the purpose. I use also the orange, or the orange and the mangoes, to explain where the fruit is grown, if it's grown here in the valley, or if it's grown in California, or if it's grown in the United States, or if it's imported. And um, then I asked the students what experience they had previously with, for example, a mango, if they ever eaten a mango, if they had any dishes which contained mango, and then if they ever prepared a mango. And again, mango has a very irregular shape, and so I want to make sure again that I'm aware of safety. So by touching the mango, you can determine the ripeness level. And this one feels nice and soft because you will see just now that um, if I want to try to make a hedgehog, I need to have a mango which is ripe to be able to fold it over. Now, I always take one and I would start cutting off the base and I said, should I cut off the base? And I hope if I engage my students that they would say, no, 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 this is wrong. This is the wrong side. And I then ask them why. So I don't necessarily take the lead on it, but I try to involve my students so that it becomes very interactive. So then I ask them, which side should I cut off? And I would hold it up like this and I said, I think I should cut it off to create a stable base alongside here. Everybody agrees? And then hopefully see a hand and said, no, I should cut it off this way. And so I do this right there. Again, this little piece goes in my waste bowl. Secure my fruit in front of me. And then I said, this contains a large pip. Which way would the pip run? Would it run this way? Or would it run this way? Or would it run this way? And so I let the students who know express their knowledge. And if the students don't know, I let them guess. And so we have this mango in front of us. And then I explain that the pip runs along the outer side of the mango, which is normally the longer side. If you look at any kind of mango, it's got a side which is a little bit wider than the other. And this is the way the pip would run. So I will take the mango. And again, this is a mango which is um, still really solid, which is a good thing because as we did with the orange, you can also cut a mango by just removing the skin. And the first thing I do is, as part of my demonstration, I take a piece of the orange skin and the mango skin and show them the difference in the thickness so they can have a com direct comparison between the one fruit and the other because if they would take the same amount of pressure to peel the mango, there would be nothing left of the mango. So I make sure that this is done differently. I go around here and cut it off very gently. And again, I'm okay with them, them, which is our students, to make mistakes. The mistake would be to cut off too much as long they adjust it each and every time they peel this mango with a knife. And I will show you a second way in a second as soon as I have this done. Okay. The mangoes, if they're a little bit firmer, they're actually more suitable to the mango slices I'm going to create now. And again, I always make sure that this is completely cut off here on the bottom. Okay. Sometimes it needs to be readjusted. There we go. Okay, discharge that. Put this in my waste bowl. Okay. Just wipe down my knife. If needed, always put it back on my side tile here and always let them clean as we go. This looks beautiful. And the question I ask then is, would you eat food which is prepared by me? in regards to how I have my workspace organized and the way I work myself. My clean hands, my clean work surface, and it just looks so much more appetizing. 
another plate, another knife. And the first way to do a mango would be the same as um, the Supreme, where we cut these little pieces of mango into little wedges, just like this. And we keep cutting them and cutting them. And then what you can see here is um, this would be very appropriate to have, for example, in a fruit platter. Okay, and I'm actually going to lay it out in a little different way because I hope the students like the excitement of being creative and the creativeness I will show you in a second what's going to happen. So you can lay it out just like this and you fabricate the rest of the mango all the way through until only the pep is left. 